Yo, back with another video, man. Listen, listen, y'all see the title of the video right now. We, we're not gonna waste a lot of time getting to it. Yo, pick up those brother from another reveals have been dropped. I know I'm a couple of days behind, but it's all right because my boy, y'all already know who it is, is here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get into the video. But first, before we do, go ahead, be watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and Hit that for your boy if you're interested in more videos like this, covering card games, especially DBS, and maybe a little other things just sprinkled in there. So make sure to subscribe to your boy, leave a like down below, and leave a comment down below so far of the reveals that you feel are the best coming in Z Legends Zinka series. All right, but without further ado, let's go ahead and slide on in. Boom, Pycon. I hate that they do his name, Haikuhan. Right. We all know him. We all love him as Pycon, a.k.a. Piccolo's younger brother, a.k.a. the other world Piccolo. Right. Always had big love for Pycon. So we're going to keep it as Pycon. All right. So we got to leave it here. Front side, when this card is text, look at the top five from the top of your deck. After one blue card with energy cost of one among them to your hand, then shuffle your deck. So the auto is going to be good for um, switching out East Kai. I'm thinking which Kai is right. The one drop East Kai when he draws a card. Your opponent plays a card during your turn. Then they uh, up energy. If I'm thinking right. The one drop Kai. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So any blue one drop. And it doesn't specify mono blue. So it could be a multicolored blue card. If you need to search for. Uh, you can add it to your hand. Right. Now you can't whiff. It's possible. But you know. Looking at top five, instead of just drawing a card, it still gives you options of what you can hit. So definitely like the auto. And then the second auto is if you have two more energy, one, your energy is added to your Z energy. You may flip this card over. If you do, draw two cards, then add cards from your hand. Add cards from your life to your hand till you have six. Or you can awaken at four, draw two cards. So now that's out of 10, you're going to go ahead and, and awaken on turn two. Whenever you charge your energy, you're going to make a way to draw uh, draw your two cards and then get the cards from your life. So you'll have a decent hefty hand uh, going into it. your turn two. All right. Then when you awaken 15 K number one auto first, when this card text, draw a card. Cool. Standard. Second auto once per turn. If it's your turn, but one of your energy is switched to active mode by one of your blue card skills. Since we choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and return it to their hand. Now, this is big. Right now, it's good that they made this clause if it's your turn, right? Because it'd be crazy if you could do this ability, this auto defensively. So they swing big, no negates. They try to combo, and then you're like, "Oh well, I'ma just, I'ma just beam or dimension magic or Weiss's coercion." There's a lot of little combat tricks that you could do, you know, to bounce battle cards back to your opponent's hand. So that's good that they saw this and they recognize blue has a lot of tools to restand energy. And it's like, you know what? <laughs> to not make this leader broken, we'll make it just during your turn. So it'd be good for an offensive push, right? Because if not, this would be, this would be a crazy blue leader just to play solely for the control matchup. This would be a control leader, right? But I definitely like that second auto. Um, to bounce with your opponent's battle cards to their hand, and it doesn't specify a cost. Of course, if it has barrier, you're not going to touch it, but it doesn't specify a cost. So if you need to get a big threat off the board for a turn, then so be it, right? And then you got to activate main once per turn, draw a card, and then place more cards from your hand at the top of your deck. Hey, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I ain't mad at it. I mean, drawing two cards to turn. I'm with it. I'm cool with it. All right, next. Now we got the Z Awaken for Pycon. Uh, Depthless skill has double strike for one blue for the Z Awaken. Um, when this card attacks, draw two cards and place one card from your hand on top of your deck. Who doesn't like drawing cards? And then second auto when this card's power is increased by one of your Pycon card skills. Choose one of your opponent's battle cards and place it at the top of the owner's deck. So. You could do some. You could do some cheeky things there too. It says when the card's power is increased by one of your Pycon cards, 
skills, just one of your opponent's battle cards and place them on top. Now, depending on ruling and wording on how you can do this, if uh, you're using, let's say you use two Pycon cards, right? Use one and then you use another Pycon card to increase your leader again, even if you're not getting benefit from it um, on a standpoint of, like offensively, if you've already got your swing and stuff out of the way, you can still put a card on, on top. So if I'm thinking of this right, let's say we're going for an offensive push. You'd go ahead, you'd buff them twice, and then you would put two cards, because it doesn't say once per turn, right? And you also get this benefit as well on the defensive step, if there's cards in the defensive step that can be used with the PyCon tag, um, you can just bounce a card. So even if it's something that you can't combo through, you just increase its power by one of your PyCon card skills, and then put that card on top, like basically a, a negate slash removal from the board. I think that's very that's very interesting for them to do. And you gotta activate main once per turn, return one of your blue Pycon cards with injury cost of eight to his owner's hand. Play up to one blue Pycon card with injury cost of five from your hand. So the um, there's two other cards of course with the reveals that's gonna play more on this activate main and you'll see these um later on in this slide. But I don't know what they do. So we're gonna find out. All right, now PyCon has a unison, two drop unison, super PyCon through mastery. My man got the Grand Ka, uh Gion looking kind of clean. He has three activate mains. I haven't I haven't read any of these cards, so just seeing it now, I'm just like, yo, this is kind of dope. It has rejuvenate once per turn. Remove five markers from the card. Of course, rejuvenate, you take the top card of your deck, add it to your life. You might not ever see that, but we'll see. Someone might find a way to do it. Activate main plus two. Look at, look at up to five cards from the top of your deck. Place up the one blue card among them in your drop and shuffle your deck. All right, so you could do some cheeky filtering here and there. We'd have to see what cards would utilize this plus two more. Um, but we might just be using the plus two just to solely get to his minus six, which, which we'll get to. And then you got a zero. Activate main draw a card and place one card from your hand under this card. Interesting. That's interesting. And then minus six, activate main, add it to one Pycon card from your deck to your hand, and shuffle your deck. Now, from what I'm seeing, this minus six might not be anything that's too major that you would ever worry about trying to get. Because there's so many there's so many search cards out here for every color. Chances are you're gonna hit majority of the pieces that you're ever gonna need. Um so I guess it's just on play. If you want to search for, you know, your get your five drop PyCon or whatever else, then you could. But other than that, I think the minus six might be irrelevant, but we'd have to see what support that we get towards that to make that viable. Next, we have Cell Awakening of the Creator. It has Deflect and Crit. When this card is played, choose all your opponent's battle cards and it costs a five or less and place them under this card. So... Goku GT, watch out, has the flex. Boy, GT loves to flood, loves to flood the board. This guy sticks on three. Got a wide board. Hmm, might be a bad day. Just putting that out there. Blue has a three drop deflect that eats the field. Five or less. Pretty good. And it has crit and it's a 25k. Activate main. Once a turn, if one or more cards are under this card, then you place all of them in the owner's drops. Switch this card to active mode. Additionally, if you use this card skill to place four more cards in drops, this card gains triple strike for the turn. Boy, listen. So all these, these decks that are going wide out here, and there's not really a lot. Goku GT gets wide. Um, Ultra Instinct Goku play some battle cards as well. Um, you can go through Vegex is a sleeper, but no one's really playing it. No one's really playing black like that. Um, if you go through yellow, yellow's not really maybe maybe since Shinron. One of those builds like that. Um but this card to be a rare it's pretty nutty. 
And the only reason it's nutty is because it has deflect. Now that deflect just makes sure, hey, I'm on board right now. Plus, it dodges things like uh, Yamcha Merciless Barrage, dodges Videl, just because it's a 25K, it's a big body with deflect, and it's on play auto, right? So chances are a lot of times it's, it's going to wipe your board, right? You're playing these low to the ground guys, it's going to wipe your board. I think this card's going to be crazy. And there's no stipulation, it's not locked to any type of archetype. I think this card's going to be in every blue uh, Zenkai deck. Has no choice. This card is, is crazy. I think it's really good. All right, so now we have uh, more of the Pycon stuff. This is the five drop Pycon test in the opposition. It has deflect 20k permanent during your turn. This card games barrier. Hmm. Gains barrier. Hmm. Activate main for two blue. Place one freezer card and one cell card from your energy. Now owners drops. Play this card from your hand and place it up to two cards on the top of your deck in your energy and rest mode. Hmm. Utilization. Got it. Activate main for one blue if you leave the card as a blue Pycon card and you return this card to its owner's hand. Play up to one blue Pycon card, but it costs an eight from your hand. If you play the card, choose out of one of your opponent's battle card, ignore and bury and place it at the bottom of their deck. So it is a spot removal for barrier cards, right? Then that activate main for two. Get good utilization because you get to use, you're going to charge a freezer card, you're going to charge a cell card just to use his energy. But then at the same time, you can pop those two, play it, this guy from your hand, and it has deflect. And then it'll have barrier because it's going to hit the board because of the flick. And then you just take two cards on top of your deck and put them in your energy and rest mode. So you're going to get the use, right? So um, you would basically just use the freeze and the cell card or the two blue and then just replace themselves. That's as easy. And then the activate main for the one blue, I think it's pretty, pretty good. And then it, um, if you play the eight drop, then you get a battle card and ignoring barrier placing at the bottom of your opponent's deck. Pretty sneaky deflect barrier on your turn. I like it. I like how it's shaping up. Then we have the eight drop like on another world champ as he beat Goku with the touched out. So sad. Anyways, dual attack, activate main. Switch this card to rest mode. Switch up to one of your blue energy to active mode, and you can't attack with battle cards for the turn. Activate battle once per turn. Look at up to one card from the top of your deck. Add up to one blue Pycon card among them to your hand. Then replace the remaining card at the bottom of your deck. If you add a card to your hand, choose one of your blue cards and it gains 5k power for the turn. So, the card on paper looks kind of eh, right? One, reason can't touch it. It's not good to get negged out. It's an eight drop. So you got to think of things like a God Sealer. It has dual attack, right? So this card has a little bit of flexibility. One, because of the dual attack, all right? So you get the first swing, cool, it gets negated. Fine, no problem. Um, Then you have the flexibility if you want the extra swing, extra swing, or if not, because you can activate main, put it in the rest mode, and then restand one of your blue energy, right? Now, of course, it locks you from getting uh, battle card attacks for the turn. But if you swing at everything else prior to, nothing to worry about. Um, and then it still gives you some flexibility against like floodgates because if they floodgate you, you're just like, fine. I'll just switch it to rest mode, restand the energy. So what? It's fine. But then I activate battle. Look at one card from the top of your deck. Add up the one blue Pycon among to your hand and place your remaining cards at the bottom. And if you added a card to your hand, choose out one of your blue cards and gets 5k power for the turn. Now, I think the tricky thing with this is going to be is like how many Pycon cards do you have in your build to make this activate battle viable, right? You don't want to just cram the deck with Pycon cards and then they're not really viable for the deck and then, you know, the deck sucks, right? But having this ability of one having basically a, a sensu bean on a stick activate battle your turn opponent's turn it's not too bad 
right? Because you can uh, just per se activate battle and your Z awaken. You already have double strike. Um, so it'd be a 20k double strike, right? You'd have the ability to to push push damage, or you could be defensive. And then on top, if you've activated main and switched into rest mode, then you have that energy open that you could maybe bean if you need to as well, or division magic, or anything else that you might need in order to you know hunker down and be defensive or push for the aggressive, right? Because if you activate main and you restand that energy, that energy can also be used for a chompa. So, got to think about things like that. So, I think the card is okay. Um, we'd have to see what cards they print that can support something like this because you are digging for a lot of PyCon cards. Um, but you'd have to be able to set up cards and hopefully you get the most out of it. But, what are you guys' thoughts on these reveals? I think, I think... For me personally, I think the five drop is pretty good. I think the leader itself is pretty good um, going into it. Um, just having some of the flexibility of um, when it's your turn, you know, you know, basically giving a buff and sending one of your opponent's battle cards to their hand. And then basically you're drawing two cards. You know, you're getting to see two cards and then maybe getting rid of uh, placing one of your cards at the top of the deck so the activate main is going to be drawing your card and then setting up what you need to see right especially when you think about the activate main here when you draw a card and then place one card from your hand on top if you set up the activate main drawing a card and then we go back to our eight drop and then you activate battle and look at that top card if you set up that pike on card you're going to add it to your hand and give yourself the beat so if you utilize the backside properly with the eight drop on board, then I think you can get a lot of defensive value coming out of this card. Only thing that's kind of scary is that it doesn't have any protection. But other than that, I think the cards are decent. I think the leader is pretty good and it might be pretty flexible just depending on what support that they print. And I'll probably have to look more into the card database and kind of see what we have, maybe make some mock, uh, decisions and a uh, deck building just to kind of see what we could come up with but make sure if you like any videos like this uh make sure to subscribe to the channel make sure to check out my other videos that i posted uh previous to these um we're going to be basically going all the way through everything until the set drops a lot of theory crafting card analysis deck analysis things like that so if you're interested in content like that subscribe to your boy comment on the channel leave a like bell notification all that good stuff and um see you guys in the next video peace